Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus. So good, guys. That bergamot and that zing. I love bergamot. It's so good. So good. Well, today's going to be an Adobe day. You know, I'm not a fan of Adobe, so take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I'm going to report the news, but I'm going to give you some commentary on it also based on my opinions, right? And some of you guys are actually here for my opinions besides the news. Anyway, so Adobe, very interestingly enough, has just skyrocketed when it comes to sales. Their sales have increased over this year, whereas the camera industry has basically went into the toilet, all right? And people are like, how is that possible? You need to take pictures to be able to use Adobe anything, right? Well, kind of, sorta, and no, but there's a lot of pictures being taken with phones and people actually want to edit those pictures now in comparison to editing them on their phone and smearing the lines and the wrinkles, which I don't do. Maybe I should be doing that. Should I do that? Guys, this new camera allows me to do that. Just mush my face into nothingness. I don't know, meh. It's not necessary, I don't think. Anyways, Adobe's fourth quarter for 2020 showed in incredible growth, all right? Incredible growth to the tune of 15% increase, I believe is what it was. Dramatic. This isn't a little bit. You're talking about a lot of bit when considering the camera market itself is like in the tank by like 40% or something or even more, all right? So it is quite amazing. And how did they do it? How do they do it? They did it basically with cloud, their cloud service, right? Their CC. Whereas in days of old, all right, reminiscing to film days. No, not that far back. But days of old where you're able to purchase an Adobe piece of software, um, you can no longer do that anymore. And if you have some old Adobe software that you want to install onto your PC, it says, wait a second. No, 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 no. You can't do that you need to purchase a monthly plan with us. That software that you bought for $1,700 is no longer valid. You just can't use it. So you'd basically have to put your machine on like network off or something, right? And that'd probably be about the only way to use it these days. And then what happens is a lot of times if there was ever a time that the computer went online, it downloads a slight patch and that patch basically says, we can no longer use this unless you update. So this is what Adobe has done. And while I really don't like it, it has made them a ton of money. Now, before I go any further, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded my ebook, go check it out over at jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook, 10 tips in making tack sharp images without Adobe. <laughs> How to do it, right? Something for amateurs, for pro ams, and of course, for professionals, you're going to learn something. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. So a while back, about a year, year and a quarter, somewhere around there, I cut the cord completely from Adobe and I created a series called Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord. That series blew up and there's just been thousands and thousands and thousands of photographers, videographers, creatives in general that have followed me down this path and just cut the cord with Adobe and said, you know what, I don't want to lease software. I don't want to have to pay for software at nauseam, all right, and continuously be updated. I don't really need it. A lot of times, the Photoshop, for example, that works perfect for what you're doing, that's all it needs is maybe some layers. That's about it. And that's been around since like what, Photoshop 7? I don't know, many, many moons ago. And that's about all you need. Of course, there's a lot of AI stuff that they have going on now to make it easier for you. Easier, right? Anyways, the number that they ended up bringing in was $3.42 billion. That is just for Q4. Fourth quarter, $3.2 billion. That's a 14% increase year over year compared to 
last year, right? That is amazing. Like I said, when we see the entire industry going into the tank. Overall, Adobe in totality went up 15% year over year at $12.87 billion. There's a lot of companies out there that would like to just even come close to those numbers, all right? Just close. And before they came out with this cloud service, their numbers were abysmal. They weren't great at all. People weren't using their software. And when they were using it, they were using the old software. They didn't update. They didn't upgrade because the upgrades were expensive, right? So there was a big downturn as far as usage. But we know that all of the schools out there, I went to art school, photography school, all right, the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale. Graduated there with a degree. Did it lead into much of anything? No, basically what you're seeing now, and of course, my photography work, but that I needed it? Probably not, but I got it. Well, I also have a degree, I have multiple degrees in child psychology, in sociology, and in computer science, because I had nothing to do with my life and I just kept on getting degrees. Anyways, that's not here nor there. The bottom line here is, do we really absolutely need to continue giving this money to Adobe every month? And I would have to say no, but I digress. Let me get back into these numbers. The obvious driving factor when it comes to the Adobe success, like I said, is CC or their digital media um, business. Their Lightroom and their Photoshop has been the major force, okay? There's been a ton of money. Just that small division, their digital, well, it's not small now, but their digital media has brought them 2.15, 2.15 billion out of that 3.42. That is massive, guys. That just shows where they're making all of their money. They're making all of their money on the lemmings that continue to use their product at nauseam in perpetuity and just constantly fork over that money every single month. Now, I was a lemming for many years also, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are too, because we, even as students of photography, videography, art in general, were told by our teachers that if you don't use Adobe software, you're not a creative, you're not a professional, you will never get a job. Facts, guys, I've been there absolute facts. And if you're older and you're sending your kids to a creative school of any kind, all right, they're going to tell them the exact same thing. I don't care if it's in music, video, photo, whatever it is, you have to be using Adobe if you want to get a job. So this perpetuates it, right? So that it goes on. And people believe this to be the case. And that was one of the reasons why I came up with the life after Adobe cutting the cord, because I didn't believe it. And I showed you guys that it's not necessary. So for the last year and a quarter, I haven't used any Adobe products at all. And I've deleted all Adobe software off every single machine in the studio. No one can use it because it's no longer there. That's basically it. Have we went out of business? No. Right, we just use different software. Now, one of the things that I find interesting but kind of disturbing at the same time is Adobe in one of their analyst presentations talking about Q4 and how they're going forward, they brought up the point or the message that they're putting out there um, of quote, creativity for all. Creativity for all. That's their message, that their software is going to provide this, all right? That is their message going forward. <sighs> I just think it's kind of presumptuous that they would believe or they would make this statement that to be creative, basically, you need to use their software, all right? And this is basically what I said, that all of the teachers, all of the professors say the exact same thing. You need to be using Adobe software to be a professional, be creative or whatnot. And they're going forward with this as of 2021. That is their message. That is their message, which is interesting. And like I said, disturbing. All right, guys, I'm breaking into this video. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. I sound like Mike Lindell. I'm breaking into this commercial with another commercial. No, I'm breaking into this video because 
What just came through as I was doing this video was that... Good morning, parents and staff. Google is experiencing technical issues worldwide. That outage is impacting the school district of Palm Beach County directly. Google Classroom and Google Mail are currently down. We will continue to update you throughout the morning. Thank you for your patience. Google is down, so I wouldn't be able to upload this now anyways. YouTube's down. Basically, Google properties are down as of right now. Alphabet was contacted with what is going on, and they replied with, we don't know, and it's just completely dead. Everything is gone. Remember, Google is like everyone's everything these days, all right? That means you've got Google Docs, and your Google Drive, and your Google Meetings, and your Google this, and your Google that, and the thing is, is people aren't paying for much of this. It's a lot of it is free, but some of them are, and they can't use the service right now because it's down. This leads me back to the whole Adobe thing. If you throw all of your eggs into one basket, you're going to have a problem, guys. You're going to have a problem. What happens when Adobe goes down and all of the crap that you have in the cloud is now missing because it starts raining? Okay, we've seen it in the past where companies lose people's data and there's a lot of people out there that use companies and store all of their data in the cloud. As of right now, my kids can't even go to school. Why? Because there's no way to get there. Why? Because they use Google Meeting. They use Google to log in to do their thing. It's like school shut down because Google is down. What the hell is going on, people? What the hell? Anyways, I just think that it's really sad that as a people that we rely on one company. Something really needs to be done with that. And this is where we go back full circle back to Adobe. You need to be careful. Okay, you need to be careful to put all of your eggs into that one basket. It's good to learn other things. So if something goes down or something's no longer available or whatever, it's kind of good to have alternatives. A perfect example here is there's people that don't have an alternative. Their Google Mail is not around right now, so they can't get information, all right? They're at work on Monday morning, blind. They don't have the Google meeting that's supposed to be going on right now with the entire sales force. That's not there. All of the Google Docs, all of that data is currently gone. Think about that. All of those presentations, all of that information, all of that data that people are working on right this second is not there. Well, how about in a day or in an hour or in 15 minutes when Google fixes this and there's a data loss and some of those presentations that you've made, that book that you've been writing, all of your passwords you've been storing and whatever the hell else you've been putting onto the Google Drives are missing. They're not there anymore. What happens? What happens to the nation? All right. You know, it's kind of gloom and doom a little bit, but I wanted to break in to be able to tell you guys this because I find it very, very disturbing that as a people, we just love to rely on single entities for stuff. In the past, it was never like that. Today, all of a sudden, it has become that way, and it really, really needs to be looked into. That's my personal opinion. I hope this video can go up by the end of the day. We'll see what happens with Google and Alphabet and what they reply with when it's supposed to be back. Who knows? But I'll probably do a proper video on this in the future. Anyways, back to the regular video. Now, what they're looking at as far as their plans is they're going to invest a lot into CC. But they're also going to invest a lot into artificial intelligent based systems and updates. That's what they're going to work on. Why is that? Well, they're trying to leverage their Adobe Sensei technology, all right? Push a button and make it happen. Blur a face, remove a background, whatever. Okay, super, super simple. This is what they're trying to do. Also, what they state is they're trying to make easier tools to use, number one. Number two, higher quality edits faster. But number three, and quite disturbing, require less individual skill. Does this not sound a little bit disturbing? I don't know, to me it does. 
the idea that we are going to create a product that will do all of this stuff, I think is great. Make it easier to use. God knows. All right. You take a look at Illustrator and you're like, oh my God, what is going on here? It took me forever to learn it. Okay. And you still don't never, I don't think, learn it a hundred percent. I don't care what it is, Photoshop, Illustrator, just whatever. There's just a ton of stuff in there and it's convoluted. The menus are a mess and everything's all over the place. But then the whole high quality, faster edits, I get that, that's fine. But the final statement, like I said, requires less individual skill. They are trying to develop software that you, the professional, doesn't really need to be around anymore. All of the edits that can or need be done can be done with unskilled people because of their, let's call it sensei, their AI, their AI based systems that allow it to be like a one click to get something done. While that's cool and all, right, for the everyday person, that's not really cool for the people that are spending tens of thousands of dollars in these art schools. Where are they gonna go? I'm gonna venture to say that these art schools are gonna slowly go belly up. A lot of them have already, guys. A lot of them have already because the value is not there. But the whole idea here is they wanna dumb everything down. They wanna make it so that it is, like they say, it requires less individual skill. So you can just basically click a button and get whatever you want done. Take it for what you will, all right? Take it for what you will. Now, what they've also said is they're going to be putting a lot more effort into in-app learning. And they're going to drive a greater number of software installations from doing so. And that is, I think, awesome. That is one of the things that I think that was really great when it came to this presentation. The idea of developing more in-app education, I think is very powerful because it allows people to learn the software a lot easier. Okay, it doesn't take so many years to figure stuff out if they would just teach you how to do it, right? And that's what they're trying to do. Now, they also said is they're going to start doing more of a hyper-personalized experience, okay? So to me, what that probably means is back to the whole AI deal, right? Because they're very into that. It's probably gonna see what I use most and then push let's say education towards those things. So if I don't need to do X, Y, and Z, but I need to do A, B, and C, well, A, B, and C will be pushed to me. Kind of cool. Like I said, I think that's probably one of the best things that I heard out of Adobe from this presentation, okay? Education is always valuable. Education is valuable. The whole idea for me to have a one click and let their sensei software take over and do whatever it needs to do. The problem with it is guys, even though they make it sound like it is a one click fix to whatever, to replace a background, to mush someone's face to God knows what, okay? The problem is, is when you get in there and you pixel peep, it's a hot ass mess. Okay, it's not great, even today. It does an okay job if there's like high contrast, there's good lines, but as soon as you start mushing those lines up, you need to get in there and start dropping down some masks and really get detailed with that little pen, all right, to really fix things up because it does turn pretty gross quick. But the thing is, is we're right now in that good enough era where someone will look at it and they'll be like, yeah, that looks really good, good enough on my phone, right? But it's the same person that's going to take that and try using it professionally, throw it into a magazine, and we're gonna take a look at this magazine. And you're like, what the heck, this is a mess, right? This is the kind of stuff that has been happening. I'm sure you guys know about it. You take a look in some of the magazines on TV, some of the commercials, you look at them, you're like, oh my God, who put this together, right? And who said that it was okay? <laughs> Just a hot mess, right? It's horrible. But 
One last thing that I want to tell you guys about when I read this and went through it is they are going to start pushing what they call multi-surface. So the idea of bleeding that edge between Android, iOS, browser base, and of course, PC base, Mac base, all right? And combine them in a way that it can, let's say, through platform to platform to platform, you can do your work. They started doing that originally back when Lightroom went to iOS and you were able to do your edits and let's say minor edits in there and then do your star ratings and whatnot and then go straight over to your PC and they're all sitting there waiting for you and then you can go finalize things in your PC. They're trying to do that better and better and better. And I think that's really great because all too often, I have a shoot that I want to go and start selecting some images for, and it would be really nice to be home selecting those images. Now, as of today, of course, I can do that. There's many means of doing that, and I don't need Adobe to do it. But that is a very powerful thing, especially for a professional that today, time is money and time is everything. ROI, the value, how much can you get done in a specific period of time because people are not paying as much as before, so we really need to get a lot done as quick as possible. Now, the last thing that I thought was a bit disturbing, and I want your thoughts on it, is they made a statement that they want to democratize creativity. Now, don't you feel that that is a little bit presumptuous, that for some reason they can do creativity for all? right? The whole idea of creativity for all using Adobe software. Like if you could not do anything creative without them, it goes full circle right back to my original statement, right? Democratize creativity. Democratize creativity. I mean, for real? I mean, people have been creative with free software all the time, forever. There's people using Linux, that don't even pay for an OS, and they use really creative tools on Linux. There's a lot, okay? There's some major packages, massive packages that are free that directly compete with Adobe product. The perfect example is if you are an editor of video, instead of using Adobe Premiere Professional, you can very easily use Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve, and it's every bit as powerful, in my personal opinion. And when it comes to color grading, it surpasses Adobe's Premiere Pro by leaps and bounds. That's my personal opinion. So, like I said, I think that there is a place for Adobe packages, Adobe software. There's a lot of people that come on board into the creative environment and they like, well, what can I use? And Adobe has a cheap package for getting them in the door. And that is their Photoshop and their Lightroom combination for like 10 bucks, okay? Which isn't bad, that is a really good price. But once they get you in the door, all of a sudden you're paying $60 a month because you need one more package and you have to buy the suite. So if you were one of those people that wanna break free of Adobe software and not pay at nauseam every single month, go right over here to Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord. That series I put together as a playlist. You can go click on one and watch all of them. I talk about Photoshop and Lightroom and Premiere Pro alternatives, of course, Audition alternatives, After Effects, Illustrator, and of course, InDesign, all right? All of them, alternatives to every one of those pieces of software that are either free or you can buy them. Hence, you own it, and when you feel good and ready to upgrade it, you can upgrade it. Simple as that, all right? so. Go check that out. Also, if you're not a subscriber as of yet, please subscribe to the channel. Also, if you got anything out of this video, even a tidbit, throw it a big thumbs up. That would be very helpful. And if you haven't went over to my website as of yet, head over to jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. And right now, use promo code YT20 at checkout. Once again, YT20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off everything in your shopping cart. Not one thing, 
everything. Also, if you haven't went over to our creative Discord server, go check it out. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of amazing people over there with a ton of information, talking about photo, video, and of course, tech. Go over to community.jchristina.com. Once again, community.jchristina.com. It's free. Join, hang out with me. Let's just shoot it. All right. It's really great because all of the conversations that we have are fully archived, searchable. Can you believe that? So many times you guys say some amazing stuff in the comment area below these videos. And I'm like, God, I can't find it. I don't know where it is. I don't know. Anyways, go over to community.jpristina.com. Also, if you want to help the channel, like a lot of you do, and I do appreciate each and every one of you, click the join button right down here, join. And it's a few dollars a month or whatever, and you can help me out, help out the channel grow and whatnot. So definitely click on that. So that's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.